This is Disney Queen Scale here, and as I told you, the two fun fact videos that we're doing for today are separated, because for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, it's gonna be a long one. Alright guys, so enjoy these endless fun facts on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And remember, this is a redo, so it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be like the other fun facts video I had for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, this is a total redo. Enjoy! At a recording session, Lucille Laverne, the voice of the Wicked Queen, was told by Walt Disney's animators that they needed an older, raspier version of the Queen's voice for the Old Witch. Laverne stepped out of the recording booth, returned a few minutes later, and gave a perfect old hag's voice that stunned the animators. When asked how she did it, she replied, Oh, I just took my teeth out. Some animators were opposed to the name Dopey, claiming that it was too modern a word to use in a timeless fairy tale. Walt Disney made the argument that William Shakespeare used the word in one of his plays. This managed to convince everyone, although any reference to the term Dopey is yet to be found in any of Shakespeare's works. All the dwarves were modeled after real people. The Special Academy Award given to the picture consisted of one standard Oscar statuette, and seven miniature statuettes on a on a stepped base. Walt Disney wanted to keep Snow White's voice as a special one-time sound and held Adria Casalotti to a very strict contract. Except for a tiny bit part in The Wizard of Oz 1939, she never had a real singing part in a movie again, though she was a classically trained singer. Roy O. Disney created the sound of the floor creaking with Dopey's slow footsteps by slowly bending an empty leather wallet back and forth. Animator Seamus Culhane recalled drawing the dwarves' march home in the high ho scene as one of the toughest assignments of his career. Although six of the dwarves were marching at the same tempo, he had to give each his, his own body language suited to the character. And he had to map each individual a walk with a blue pencil, a ruler, and a ruler because of the unusual angles and perspective used in the sequence. Then there was Dopey bringing up the rear, hopping out of step with the others, but who still had to be smoothly integrated into the action. Describing the sheer amount of painstaking, hand-drawn labor this involved, Colhane said, I worked six months on that goddamn thing and it doesn't last a minute on screen. Disney Studios in Burbank was built with the profits from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, 1937. It was the highest grossing film of all time, adjusted for inflation. Fifty ideas for the dwarves' names and personalities were listed in the film's proposal. The list included all of the nouns finally included except Dopey and Doc, Dopey being the last to be developed. Some of the dwarves were awful. He steals and drinks and is very dirty. Biggy Wiggy or Big O Ego. Blabby, Deefy, Dirty. Gabby, Gatsby, Gloomy, Hoppy Jumpy. Hotsy, Jaunty, Nifty, and Shifty. Sneezy was a last minute replacement for Deefy. Peanuts creator Charles Schultz once wrote that he had heard that another name considered for a dwarf was Snoopy and that he was relieved that it had not been chosen and as it would have probably prevented him from giving him from giving that name to his famous cartoon beagle it was the first of many walt disney films to have its premiere engagement at new york city's radio city music hall at the end of the film's initial engagement there are all there all the velvet seat upholstery had to be replaced it seems that young children were so frightened by the sequence of Snow White lost in the forest that they wet their pants and consequently the seats at each and every showing of the film. These are scenes that were planned but never fully animated. The queen holds the prince in a dungeon and uses her magic to make skeletons dance for his amusement. Fantasy sequence accompanying Someday My Prince Will Come in which Snow White imagines herself dancing with her prince in the clouds beneath a sea of stars. Dwarves building Snow White a bed 
with help from woodland creatures, can be seen during the Disney's Golden Anniversary of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves special. The song Music in Your Soup, where the dwarves sing about the soup that Snow White had just made them, can be seen during the Disney's Golden Anniversary of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves special. The song can be heard on the soundtrack. A musical number, You're Never Too Old to Be Young, featuring the dwarves. It was pre-recorded but never animated, can be heard on the soundtrack as a demo. When the movie was released, it was generally accepted that the correct plural form of dwarf was dwarf, spelled with F-S. J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, published a year earlier and later, Lord of the Rings, gradually popularized that uncommon variant dwarves, spelled D-E-S, so that the dwarfs in the movie are, are today often erroneously referred to as dwarves, V-E-S, and the title even given as Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, V-E-S. It held the title of highest grossing film ever for exactly one year after which it was knocked out of the top spot by Gone with the Wind, 1939. To keep the animators' minds working, Walt Disney instituted his $5 a gag policy. One notable example of this policy is when Ward Kimball suggested that the dwarves' noses should pop one by one over the, fact, over the footboards while they were peeking at Snow White. Snow White is the youngest Disney princess at the age of 14. Hidden Mickey, formed by three stones on the wall behind the queen as she strides down the basement to perform her spell. Publicity material relates that production employed 32 animators, 102 assistants, 167 in-betweeners, 20 layout artists, 25 artists doing watercolor backgrounds, 65 effects animators, and 158 female inkers and painters. Two million illustrations were made using 1,500 shades of paint. Convinced that it would fail, the Hollywood film industry labeled the film Walt Disney's Folly. The first full-length animated feature film to come out of the United States. The first ever El, Apo El Apostol, 1917, and Sin Dejar Rastros, 1918, by Quirino Cristiani, but both films are considered lost. The oldest full-length animated feature film that can still be seen today is The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, 1926, which clocks in at 65 minutes and was animated entirely in silhouette. The film was also going to include all three of the Queen's assass assassination attempts, Poison Comb, Bodice Suffocation, and The Poison Apple, but eventually streamlined it to just the apple instead. Up until very late in the production, just the bodice was out with the comb remaining. When comedian Billy Gilbert found out that one of the dwarves' names was Sneezy, he called up Walt Disney and gave him his famous sneezing gag and got the part. 25 songs were written for the movie, but only 8 were used. It was one of the first films to have related merchandise available at the time of premiere. This was the first film to ever have a soundtrack recording album released for it. Because Walt Disney Pictures did not have its own music publishing company when the earlier animated films were produced, all the rights to the publish all the rights to publish the music and songs from this film are actually still controlled by the Bourne Company. In later years, the studio was able to acquire back the rights to the music from all the other films except this one. Prior to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves 1937, a movie soundtrack recording was unheard of and with little value to a movie studio. The trees that grab Snow White's dress were based on unique Gary Oak trees found on southern Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Walt Disney had toured through this area and noted their eerie twisting shape. The prince was originally a much more prominent character, but the difficulty found in animating him convincingly forced the animators to reduce this part significantly. The original design for Snow White was done by the artist behind Betty Boop, giving her pouty red lips, long eyelashes, and a glimpse of her ankles, causing her to look more like a flapper than a demure princess. 
Walt Disney threw this out as he wanted Snow White to be wholesome, innocent, and clothed in a peasant style dress rather than being sexy. The original 12 inch by 10 inch artwork was kept by one of the animators and held by his family until it was put up for auction at uh, in August 2014 when it was expected to make 15,000 pounds but was sold for 2,793 pounds. As it's widely known, every country where the movie has been translated has its own set of na seven names for the dwarves including including Germany, home of the original fairy tale. However, in the original tale by brothers Jacob Grimm and Wilhelm Grimm, the dwarves have no individual names at all. Ward Kimball nearly quit after his two main sequences. The dwarves eating soup and building a bed for Snow White, respectively, were cut. Walt Disney convinced him to, to stay by giving him the character of Jiminy Cricket in the next feature, Pinocchio, 1940. Dopey initially was to talk with the voice of Mel Blanc, but was made mute instead. The same happened with Gideon in Pinocchio, 1940, though Blanc actually was the one who did the vocal effects for that. Walt Disney came up with the idea for the film when he was only 15, working as a newsboy in Kansas City. He saw a major presentation of a silent film version of Snow White, 1916, starring Marguerite Clark. The screening was held at the city's convention hall in February 1917, and the film was projected onto a four-sided screen using four separate projectors. The movie made a tremendous impression on the young viewer because he was sitting where he could see two sides of the screen at once, and they were not quite in sync. Deanna Durbin auditioned for the voice of Snow White, but was not chosen because Walt Disney felt her voice was too mature. She was 14 at the time. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves 1937 was the first full-length cell animated feature in motion picture history. Based on a German fairy tale by the Brothers Grimm, it was the first animated feature film produced in America, the first produced in full color, and the first to be produced by Walt Disney Productions. It took animator Wolfgang Ritherman nine tries to get the animators of the sleighs in the magic mirror just right. He achieved it by folding the, the paper in half, drawing one half of the face, then turning the paper over and tracing the other half. He was then dismayed when his hard work was obscured by fires, smoke, and distortion glass for the film. It made four times as much money as any other film in 1938. The British Board of Film Censors, now the British Board of Film Classification, gave the film an A certif certificate upon its original release. This resulted in a nationwide controversy as to whether The Enchanted Forest and The Witch were too frightening for younger audiences. Nevertheless, most local authorities simply overrated the censors' decisions and gave the film a U certificate. The film was finally released on video in 1994, after several years of the studio resisting any notion of the idea. According to former Disney CEO Michael Eisner, the reason why the studio ultimately released Snow White and the Seven Dwarves 1937 on video was because the film was about to enter the public domain in Italy and would be prone to being pirated. Ultimately, Disney had their copyright on the movie extended. When the dwarves bathe, Dopey swallows a bar of soap. A sequence showing how they got the soap back out of him was filmed as a pencil test, but was not included in the film. It was later shown on the Magic Worlds of Disney 1954 TV show, along with pencil test segment for the song The Music in Your Soup. In the dwarves' home, almost every wooden surface has an animal carved into it. Even the edge of each stair step is the face of an owl. Only the door to the bedroom looks to have smiling, human-shaped creatures on it. Snow White, Cinderella, and Aurora can communicate with animals. Also, all three of these classic princesses wore peasant clothes at the beginning of their film. It was the first animated feature to be selected for the National Film Registry. The film's initial budget of $250,000 was 10 times the average budget for one of the studio's Silly Symphony shorts. As it transpired, the final budget was in excess of $1.4 million, a huge amount for any film at the time. For the scene where the dwarves are sent off to wash, animator Frank Thomas had Dopey do a hitch step to catch up to the others, as suggested in the storyboard. 
Walt Disney liked it so much that he had the step added to other scenes, much to the chagrin of the other animators who blamed Thomas for the extra work they had to do. There are only 11 humans in the film. Snow White, the dwarves, the queen, the prince, and Hunky. Of these, the prince is the only one never named. I mean, he does have a name. Like, some of us think his name is Prince Ferdinand or something like that. But, like, I don't know where, like, people find that out or whatever. I've just seen it and heard it around and pretty much it's, like, everywhere. <laughs> like, you can go on, like, any, like... You can go online and type in name of Snow White Prince, and I'm pretty sure it's, like, Prince Ferdinand or something. But I don't know if that's, like, actually what Walt Disney intended or not. Oh, well. At least we gave him a name. Lux Radio Theater broadcast a 60-minute radio adaptation of the movie on December 26, 1938, with many of the Walt Disney voice artists reprising their film roles. When Walt Disney picked up his honorary Oscar statuettes for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937, he told the Academy Award audience about Pinocchio 1940, which was still in production, holding their attention for a full 25 minutes. Jiminy Cricket is mentioned twice by the dwarves. It's an old expression usually used to, impress, to express surprise. Other names for the dwarves included Busy, Crabby, Daffy, Dumpy, Flabby, Helpful, Lazy, Scroopy, Sniffy, Snoopy, Stubby, Thrifty, and Wheezy. When the movie was played at Radio City Music Hall on its first release, the theater managers had to replace the music played when Snow White runs into the forest because they were nervous that the kids would be too scared upon hearing it. The movie was to, was to start with scenes involving Snow White's mother, but they had to be cut to avoid the wrath of the censor. March Champion served as a movement model for Snow White. Some of this animation was later reworked for Maid Marian in Disney's Robin Hood 1973 and for Duchess in Disney's The Aristocats 1970. Storyboards for a sequel for this movie were discovered in the Disney Company vault titled Snow White Returns. Upon examining the length of the script and storyboards, it seemed like it was meant to be a short film than a full-length movie. It was also meant to include revised versions of the soap and bed building scenes that were excluded from the movie itself. The real reason for why this sequel never went further than pre-production is anyone's guess. It's unknown if Walt Disney really wanted this to be made in the first place. The whole storyboard to this unmade short is viewable on Snow White on the Snow White Blu-ray. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves 1937 became the first release in Disney's new Platinum Edition DVD series, hitting stores on, on October 5, 2001. On its first day, more than 1 million copies were sold. The film came third in the UK's Ultimate Film, in which films were placed in order of how many seats they sold at cinemas. Harry Stockwell, who voices the prince, was, fa was the father of actors Guy Stockwell and Dean Stockwell. There is popular theory from Disney fans that the skeleton seen being mocked by the queen was the prince. Plus, many Disney fans believe Snow White technically died and the final scene where Snow White and the prince arrived at the prince's castle was really them reunited in the afterlife, especially how the peach-colored cloud supposedly represents heaven. Sergei M. Eisenstein, director of Battleship Potemkin, 1925, called it the greatest film ever made. To avoid depicting the seven dwarves killing Queen Grimhild, the film depicts her death as caused by a random lightning bolt. June 2008, ranked number one on the American Film Institute's list, list of 10 greatest films in the genre animation. One of the only two personally produced Walt Disney feature-length animated films not to carry the scene screen credit Walt Disney Presents. Instead, the first credit reads a Walt Disney feature production since it was Disney's first feature-length film. The other personally produced Disney film not to say Walt Disney Presents was Fantasia 1940, which in its roadshow release contained no written credits at all except for the intermission card, and in its general release contained only the title Fantasia in its opening credits. At the beginning of the movie, when the evil queen is walking toward her mirror, you see that the surrounding symbols around the mirror are actually the different horoscope symbols. 
According to the audio commentary on the 2009 Diamond Edition Blu-ray DVD, Snow White's quote to the doves of, of Want to Know a Secret, Promise Not to Tell, would later be used in the Beatles' 1963 song, Do You Want to Know a Secret? The opening credits feature an acknowledgement virtually unique in Hollywood features of the 1930s. My sincere appreciation to the members of my staff whose loyalty and creative endeavor made possible this production. Walt Disney's Snow White, uh, Snow White, America's first animated feature, was the biggest gamble of Disney's career, and its fortunes would either make or break the studio. Disney employees worked countless hours of uncompensated overtime to see it through. Industry skeptics called it Disney's folly, but instead it became one of the biggest box office hits before World War II. Ironically, in January 1938 interview, Disney lamented that he and his staff had learned so much from making Snow White, I wish I could yank it back and do it all over again. It was considered to be one of 15 films that changed American cinema. The Seven Dwarves would later appear in an, ed in an educational short film, The Winged Scourge. 1943. In the original outline for the film, Queen Grimhild was depicted as wanting to marry the teenage prince herself. Her murderous rage was caused by his rejection of her marriage proposal, and there were scenes revealing that she was killed that she has killed other princes who crossed her path. These plot lines were eventually rejected. With the exception of Dopey, none of the dwarves referred to any of the others by name. Dancer March Champion, whose movements as a dancer were rotoscoped to be used as a guide for Snow White, married and divorced one of the Disney animators on the film, Art Babbitt. She later married, dance, la later married, danced, and acted on film and stage with famed choreographer and director Gower Champion. Queen Grimhild's main goal is to remain the fairest woman in the land and not be replaced by a younger beauty. In the course of the desperate pursuit of this goal, Grimhild transforms herself into an old and ugly woman, destroying her own beauty rather than that of Snow White. During the production phase of the film, Grim Natwick and Norm Ferguson were tasked with refining the design and overall visual appearance of Queen Grimhild and Snow White. For the Queen, they studied the faces of several beauties of the era, among the ones Cited as visual inspiration in various sources were Gail Sendergaard, 1899-1985, Marlene Petrich, 1901-1992, Joan Crawford, 1904-1977, and Greta Garbo, 1905-1990. For the Queen clothes, they mostly used a preserved medieval statue of Uta von Ballenstite, circa 1000-1046 a German aristocrat most famous for her striking visual depiction in the Nomburg Cathedral. No rotoscoping was used for the depiction of Queen Grimhild as the animators preferred drawing the queen over Snow White and devoted more attention to her depiction. The animators found that she was more real and complex as a woman, more erotic and driven to desperate acts by her magic mirror. Particular attendant, attention was paid to her lovely cruel mouth and eyes, and to her graceful movements. Snow White does not once interact with the prince. This makes her the only Disney princess who does not talk to her love interest. While trying to settle a, on a characterization, Queen Grimhild, Walt Disney started envisioning her as a mixture of Lady Macbeth and the Big Bad Wolf. He wanted her to be Beautiful, but in his words, her beauty is sinister, mature, plenty of curves. She becomes ugly and menacing when scheming. The film is included on Roger Ebert's Great Movies list. When the dwarves first encounter an intruder, i.e. Snow White, in their cottage, they hide the, in the forest of proclaimed Jiminy Cricket. This, of course, is one of the main characters in Walt Disney's second full-length animated feature, Pinocchio, 1940. The queen is supposed to be Germanic in origin, but the book of spells she is reading is written in the Italian language. For Queen Grimhild's other form as an old hag, the animators had to create new body language and facial expressions. Designer Joe Grant used Lucia Laverne's body language as a visual representation. He claimed that he also took inspiration for her design from one of his female neighbors. 
The Screen Guild Theater broadcast a 30-minute radio adaptation of the Walt Disney version in, on April 19 on April 24, 1944, with Billy Gilbert reprising his film role. Throughout the film, the Queen is clad mostly in black and other negative dark colors, providing a visual contrast to Snow White's bright, colorful wardrobe. While the Queen covers her hair under a hood for most of the film, her hair is depicted as a shiny black when it is removed. She actually shares Snow White's hair color. Sterling Holloway, who later appeared in many Walt Disney films, was considered for the role of Sleepy. Spoonerizing comedian Joe Twerp was earlier considered for the role of Doc, according to the DVD supplementary material. The part went to Ray Atwell instead, but Twerp did perform as the voice of Doc on the radio. In the film, Snow White is seen wearing tan tights instead of showing her bare legs. In the Disney books, Snow White does not wear tights. The Evil Queen character is pictured on one of 10 USA non-denominated commemorative postage stamps celebrating Disney villains issued as a pane of 20 stamps on 15th of July 2017. The set was u- was issued in a single sheet of 20 stamps. The price of each stamp on day of issue was 49 cents. The other villains depicted in this issue are Honest John, Pinocchio, 1940, Lady Tremaine, Cinderella, 1950, The Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland, 1951, Captain Hook, Peter Pan, 1953, Maleficent, Sleeping Beauty, 1959, Cruella de Vil, 101 Dalmatians, 1961, Ursula the Little Mermaid, 1989, Gaston, Beauty and the Beast, 1991, and Scar, The Lion King, 1994. The throne of Queen Grimhild has a peacock motive, possibly in reference to her vanity. According to BoxOfficeMojo.com, if adjusted for inflation, it is the 10th highest grossing film of all time in the U.S. and the highest among films not nominated for Best Picture of the Academy Awards. Happy was the only dwarf that Snow White does not refer to by name. The film was a particular favorite of Dutch painter Piet Mondrain. Walt Disney paid the animators on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs five dollars for any gag that made it into the final version of the movie. Queen Grimhild was the first major character to ever die in a Disney film, and the screenwriters struggled with how to depict her death. They rejected the death scene in the original story out- outright, as the original story had Snow White killing her stepmother by using torture. They felt that it would ruin Snow White's image as a good girl. There is a planned Disney sequel about Snow White's sister, Rose Red. It was included among the 1001 movies you must see before you die, edited by Steven Schneider. All of the dwarves have dark eye color except for Dopey. His eyes are light blue. The design of the character Queen Grimhild is credited to Walt Disney and Joe Grant, while the one responsible for animating the character was Art Babbitt. It was included among the American Film Institute's 1998 list at the top 100 greatest American movies. Queen Grimhild wears high-heeled pumps in her youthful form and gray slippers in her aged form. Disney announced that a live-action adaptation was in the works on October 31, 2016. Susanna Foster and Betty Janes auditioned for the voice of Snow White. In trying to design Queen Grimhild's castle, the animators took inspiration by the Alcazar of Segovia, a distinctive castle palace in Spain. Alan Jones, Douglas MacPhail, Dennis Morgan, and Felix Knight auditioned for the role of the prince. In 1937, Shirley Temple represented Walt Disney with a seven mini Oscars representing the Snow White and the Dwarves, respectively. Happy is the only one of the seven dwarves who has white eyebrows. All the rest have black eyebrows. Despite his name, Sneezy only sneezes four times throughout the movie, not counting the two that are stifled. Even though Snow White is the youngest Disney princess, she is actually the oldest in the Disney franchise by film, as she was the original Disney princess with Cinderella and Aurora not making their debuts until the 1950s. This film in Star Wars 4, A New Hope, which was re-released nearly 40 years later, were both thought to be a flop. But ironically, both films did well in the box office and each became considered the biggest success of Walt Disney and George Lucas, respectively. Both, both films also won Oscars as well.
Doc is the only one of the seven dwarves who wears spectacles. In the original film from 1915, the queen and the witch were actually two separate characters. The running gag of Sleepy being bothered by a fly was originally going to culminate in Sleepy trapping the fly in Snow White's now empty coffin. Frida Van Hessen, the Dutch singing voice of Snow White, was forced into hiding during World War II and survived the Holocaust. She wrote a book about her life, about her life, Life in the Shadow of the Swastika. Queen Grimhild wears a purple gown and black cloak in her regular form. Following her transformation, she starts using a black robe instead. Walt Disney was inspired to make this the first feature film for the studio based on remembering how he felt when he seen a silent short film version of Snow White when he was a, when he was young and wanted to give other children and audiences in general a some sense of wonder. This film was selected into the National Film Registry in 1989, the first year of introductions, for being culturally, culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. It was the only full-length Disney animated film until The Black Cauldron in 1985 to have completed scenes cut prior to release. Dopey is the only one of the seven dwarves who does not have a beard. It was Walt Disney Animation Studios' first feature film and only one of the 1930s. A love model was used for animators to help them give Snow White a more realistic look. This worked so well that the live models were brought in for animated features from then on. Many even were given costumes and acted out scenes to help with the drawing process. In the film's 1992 UK release in cinemas, the film was distributed by Warner Brothers. However, future from the mid-90s would be fully released through Disney or its subsidiary company, Buena Vista Home Entertainment. And finally, Snow White seemingly being killed at the end only to turn out to be alive has gone on to be used in many other Disney and non-Disney films, so much so that the name of the cliche has been called the Disney Death. And those are your fun facts for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Thank you guys so much for sticking through this. I'm so sorry it's as long as it is, but remember, this is a redo. So I hope you guys enjoy these fun facts much more than you enjoy the other ones, or just as much, or not at all. I'll see you guys in the next fun facts video. Love you, little skeletons. See you in a bit.